What's going on everybody? I wanted to do a video um, in respect to pre-workout nutrition. This is a question I typically get like all the time, you know, not just from online coaching, but general population, but from being in the health field for about 10 plus years, people generally want to know like, do I need to eat something before I work out? And, you know, I look at pre-workout nutrition as a small piece of the puzzle. It's beneficial, but you gotta look at the big pieces, the major players in the game. One of the major players in the game is your overall intake throughout the day. Um, if you're not knowing how much you're eating or how, you know, what kind of food you're intaking, you're not somewhat aware of what you're doing day to day, pre-workout nutrition is really not gonna do very much for you in the big scheme of things. So you really wanna know what your intake looks like. Whether you're tracking food, tracking your macros, intuitively eating, um, you're on a meal plan, it really doesn't matter. It comes down to how are you, you know, utilizing your overall intake and how are you managing that? How are you keeping aware? So figure that out first. The next question that most people have tied related to pre-workout nutrition is how frequently should I be eating? So meal frequency does not matter in the grand scheme of things. It's all, de it's all dependent on the individual on what their everyday life looks like. If I tell somebody that you need to eat eight times a day to be optimal and they can't physically do that or their schedule does not dictate that they can do that I've already set them up to fail so more so you know what does your day look like let's go ahead and structure what's gonna make the most sense for you to be successful at being adherent to it all right so that way you're not eating so frequently that you're always hungry and that you're not spacing out your meals too far where you're just starving and you want to eat your whole fridge so there has to be some sort of balance and everybody's different as far as their work schedules, um, how active they are throughout the day, you know. So there's a lot of variables when it comes down to what's going to be the best for you individually for how, how many meals should I have throughout the day. Now pre-workout nutrition is one of the details or nutrient timing aspects it can be very beneficial um, because it helps out with overall performance you know to say that you just need only carbs um, or only protein or only fats generally that's probably not the best approach to nutrition where you just have meals that are just loaded on one specific macronutrient um, but finding the balance between how much you need with each meal um, is kind of person dependent as well but pre-workout nutrition, it can go both ways, go a couple ways, but the two ways that I've experienced is carbs and protein and fat and sodium. So generally, uh, most people aren't living a ketogenic lifestyle, so I'll start off with the carbs and protein. My experience was, you know, for like, for forever, like for a very long time, I never really ate anything before a workout. And people just didn't like understand it. Like, oh my gosh, like, I mean, how do you not eat before you work out? You know, how do you, how do you perform very well um, before you go train um, at two o'clock in the morning? Yeah, I trained at two o'clock in the morning for like, for like three, three and a half years and I never ate anything. Uh, my body was just so adapted to waking up and let's go ahead and just, train at that time so so I did that and but when I started working with my most recent coaches Roger and Allie Baker at Brad Fitness one of the first things that they had me do was like dude you need to start eating um, your pre-workout meal you need to have you need to a lot for some of your intake for the day your daily allotment for your pre-workout um, because this is going to help out with performance, going to help out with recovery. It's just going to help out overall. So you need to start doing that. And I was like, okay, I'm paying you guys money, so I better start listening. And 
you know, I was like, okay. So it's not like I added more calories overall to make that work. I took my overall intake for the day and I portioned some of that for my pre-workout. So what I did, because I don't like to, I didn't want to cook so early in the morning. I don't have to wake up even earlier. So I did oatmeal, uh, whey protein, and a banana. And I blended it all up in a magic bullet, put that in the refrigerator, and boom. Next morning, I'll drink that, do my dynamic warm-ups, my foam rolling before I worked out. Boom. You know, it was all done. I didn't really expect to see a dramatic change in the way that I was able to train, but I will say that as my training got more intense, you know, I was getting closer to my first powerlifting meet, so I was lifting heavier. I mean, I was really looking forward to those five minute breaks uh, between sets. Um, my recovery was a lot better, like overall in the gym, um, but also after. You know, and I, I really do attribute that because really no other contributing factors, no other added additions um, to my regular routine outside of implementing a pre-workout meal. And, you know, how that really helped out with my performance overall uh, in the gym. So definitely, I, I definitely have a, a testimony on implementing something like that but doesn't necessarily mean that you just increase your food intake overall for the day it's more so what's my daily allotment i'm going to partition or portion out some of that intake that allotment into my pre-workout i will say though in a contest prep or in a fat loss phase pre-workout nutrition is huge uh, because as your food intake decreases you can't just be saving your quick energy sources, your carbohydrates <laughs> for dinner time when you're training in the morning. Like it, it just doesn't make sense, you know? So when you are prepping or when you are in a fat loss phase, it becomes a lot more important on how you structure your nutrient timing, like how you structure your meals. Because less you have, the more you have to optimize when you're having it. So for, for me too, I was able to experience ketosis or ketogenic dieting. And so in ketogenic dieting, you can't have, you're not doing carbohydrates. So what do you have pre-workout? I had fat and I had sodium. Fat mainly came from medium chain triglycerides or MCT oil, avocados, pecans, macadamia nuts, um, they're really like just quick fat um, s sources, um, you know, and so plant-based fats. And then sodium was like 1,500 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams of sodium. And I usually got that through bouillon, like chicken bouillon or beef bouillon, and I just have a broth. Um, and I would just... I would just drink broth um, on the way to the gym from my work and you know about an hour before I go and train and my vascularity and my pump was insane when I did that uh, so it was mainly just coming from fats and sodium for my pre-workout but it still worked the same uh, as far as like I think mentally it helps a lot uh, to know that hey I got some sort of like readily accessible fuel sources um, before I go and work out and train so mentally I think it helps um, physiologically I feel like if you have it at the right timing like an hour hour and a half before you go train even up to two hours before you go and work out um, these things are breaking down into your system so it's the readily available it's not like your body has to break down anything already um, and it's not adding to your overall intake for the day so it's not necessarily causing you to be in a overall surplus of food for the day so it's, so that's where people might get into trouble is that they are adding 
additional food um, on top of their regular allotment, which is causing them to gain weight. They're like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I started implementing more food and I started gaining weight. Well, yeah, of course. So that's the biggest thing is if you look at your overall intake and you portion it out throughout the day during different times of the day um, where it's gonna be beneficial with how you work out, how you train, and even post-workout, um, you know, you're gonna find that these details are gonna start making sense. But if you don't have a clear indication of what you're doing overall for your intake, it's really not gonna do very much because you may have the best training session, but then you eat whatever the crap you want for the rest of the day and really pay no attention. It's all for naught. It's really not gonna do very much for you in the grand scheme of things. So you need to look at your overall intake, then you start breaking it down into the details because that's going that's more like the icing of the cake in my in my opinion is you've got the big solid base, the big recipe and then boom, you got that foundation and then now you can do the icing on the cake with the details. You start making um making your cake look nice. So, um in respect to uh, Pre-workout nutrition just depends on the the person or what type of nutrition plan that you're on and you need to experiment um, on what that looks like. But generally, carbs and protein, fats and sodium, depending on what type of approach that you're going for, either carb or keto, you know, so, but you want to play around with that. And generally, I keep my carbohydrate sources, pre-workout complex carbohydrates. I kind of watch the fiber intake because I don't want to feel bloated during my workout. So, but yeah, it's complex carbohydrates um, for the most part. If I don't have a lot of time, then I'll have something more quick, more simple sugars um, because those are gonna be easily digestible, gets into the system a lot quicker. You know, I mean, you kind of have to go with what you have access to and what you have time for. So, but you have to experiment. But I do find that pre-workout um, nutrition can play a vital role. Um, but you have to look at your overall intake. And I think just one side note, uh, people that are tracking like Fitbit um, or MyFitnessPal, and you track all your food in there and it's like and then you do your track your activity in there and it's going to tell you like oh you need to eat additionally like 400 calories don't do that don't follow what it's supposed what getting calories back for working out that's really not how it works out so um it's not a reward system because you worked out you get to eat more uh, you still have to pay attention to what your body really needs overall and I say for the first little bit, just look at your overall intake and just partition or portion out a little bit before your pre-workout and see what your body does physically, physiologically. And if you do find that you're losing weight um, by doing that, by all means, overall intake might need to increase depending on your goals at the present time. So look at the big picture and then start dialing it into the pieces of the puzzle that way, you know, you can really figure out what your body responds well with and what, what doesn't. That's kind of the whole biggest thing is everybody's different on what's going to be effective. So if you have any questions, by all means, let me know um, below and I will answer them um, accordingly. All right, thanks.